In this video, we are going to have a look at normal distribution questions, how they appear in IB math exams, and we're going to look at how we solve these types of questions using our calculator. So normal distribution questions in IB math exams are quite easy to spot because the question will actually tell you it's a normal distribution question. They'll say the random variable is normally distributed. And what they then typically give you is the mean, which was this mu, here, yeah, this Greek symbol, and they'll give you a standard deviation. So if the mean and the standard deviation is given, we can, we can work out a bunch of probability questions. So an example I'll do is let's just say we have some data on the heights of trees in a forest, and we have so many trees that we can work out that the mean and the standard deviation and, and the heights end up showing this bell curve. We have this bell curve where it's symmetrical, and our mean is 50 metres, and our standard deviation will be 10 metres. So this bell curve means that we're going to have the, the most amount of trees near the mean height of 50 metres. And then if we go to the right of the mean, we're getting taller trees, 60 metres, 70 metres tall, 80 metres tall, but there's going to be less and less of them. So this, this height here is going to be, uh, the, the Y in the sort of graph here, is going to be uh, the frequency or the amount of trees that are that tall. And if we go to the left, uh, there's not as many small trees as well. So we get a bell curve when we have a very large amount of data on something that is continuous and continuous things have height and time and weight and these sorts of things. Okay, so if we know that the that the mean is 50 and the standard deviation, which is just going to be uh, the spread of the data, this is a value of 10, what we can do is we can find out a few different probabilities. And a common question in the IB, they'll say, well, what's the probability that uh, some randomly selected tree from the forest, uh, let's say, is greater than 50 metres. So we're going to think about where 50 metres is, which is actually the mean, and the probability that a randomly selected tree is greater than 50 is the area underneath this curve, this bell curve, and it will be from to the right of 50 metres. Now, as this bell curve is symmetrical, and also we know that the area underneath a bell curve is equal to 1, because the area corresponds to the probability, and probability needs to add up to 1, it's actually going to be 0 0.5. This is the most basic type of question they can ask. If they say, what's the probability of being greater than the mean or less than the mean, it will just be, in this case, referring to all of this area here, it's any tree that's greater than 50, and it'll be an area of 0 0.5. So the area in here will be 0 0.5. Now, they can get a little bit more tricky. If they say, what's the probability, well, of selecting a random tree, and it is greater than 60? And what this question is now saying is that, well, if I, if I put a... If we put a tree at 60, which might be somewhere here, 60, what's the probability of it being greater than 60? Which will be all of this area here. And to calculate this, we need to use our calculator. So let's get our calculator out. And we want to work out the probability that's greater than 60. So you want to try and find your probability and distribution section. And we want to use normal CDF. We, we never use normal PDF in IB Math, so don't worry about this one. It's the normal CDF. And it will ask for the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. Well, we know the mean was 50, the standard deviation was 10, and we want the area from the lower bound, so the lowest bound will be 60, and the upper bound will be the tallest tree in the world that we can think of, and then make it even taller. So uh, all of the area underneath extremely tall trees will be insignificant. So you can make this number extremely large. You might see some people just put 99999. Okay, so this is 0 0.159. And that will be this area in here, 0 0.159. And that will be the answer to this question. The probability that our randomly selected tree is greater than 60, will be 0 0.159. Okay, uh, we can also find out the area 
or the, the probability of between values. So if the question said, what's the probability that our tree is between, let's say, 30 and 45. So what's the what's the chance or what's the probability that we select a tree that was in between 30 and 45 meters? Well, that's going to be from from somewhere here, which was a tree that was 30 up to here, which is 40. So what we're calculating is this area between 30 and 40. And we can just use our calculator to do that. It would be the exactly the same steps before, but our lower bound would be 30 and our upper bound would be 40. So you can you can do that for me if you want. Uh, but that'll be a probability. Oh, sorry, that should be a 45, 45. And we can get that answer there. Okay, now what uh, these questions then sometimes get a little bit trickier is when they don't tell you how high a tree is. So on our x-axis here, but what they do tell you is some probability. So an example of this is they might say well, the probability that a tree is smaller than some unknown value A is, and they might give you the answer. It will be, let's say, 0 0.55. 0.55. So we don't know the height of the tree, but we know the probability is left of it, less than, is 0 0.55. So what we can do is we can kind of think, well, I know that the area to the left of 50 is 0 0.5. So the area of 0 0.55 will be somewhere about here, where 0 0.55 will be this area all the way up to some unknown height, which will be our, our answer. And if we are given a probability, but we don't know the height or the, the, the value on our x-axis, we need to use the other button on our calculator, which is in probability distributions, it's the inverse normal. And it asks for the area. So the area, which is the probability, you'd, you'd type in 0 0.55, the mean would be 50, the standard deviation would be 10. And before I press OK, it's going to give me a height and it's going to, or hopefully it's a little bit bigger than 50 meters because it told us uh, that the probability was 0 0.55. And as we, as we guessed, it was 51.3. So we'd say A equals, the height is 51.3 meters. And this pretty much just says that uh, 55 percent of the trees are less than 51.3 meters okay so this is just a brief introduction i encourage you to practice a bunch of questions uh, on on this topic and try and use your calculator and um, use the tools of normal cdf and inverse normal to help you solve these questions okay good luck